Assalamu alaikum. Hi. Today's class is regarding blood and blood components. There are more questions asked from this topic regarding what are the important blood components, what are the indications for blood transfusion or any other component transmission, then what is the degree of temperature of keeping particular component in blood bank and what are the important nurses responsibility for transmission of blood or blood products and what is the half life period of each component. All those things are discussed in this class so we will go to the class blood and blood products see what are the important components of blood the important components of blood include RBC WBC plasma platelet and each of them contribute individual function in the body okay see we will go to one by one what are the main indications for transfusion of blood? First is anemia. There are acute anemia as well as chronic anemia in which hemoglobin will be less than 6 or 7 gram per deciliter which indicates a need of the body to be transfused with packed RBCs. Next one is cancer or leukemia. Hemophilia that is coagulation deficient factors or factors that is responsible for coagulation is deficient in such sort of disease conditions which need to be transfused. Next is kidney disease or kidney failure in order to produce hemoglobin. Okay. Next is liver disease including coagulopathies, sickle cell anemia, thrombocytopenia or decreased production of platelets which require a uh, uh, outside um, replacement of platelets. Okay. What are the sources of blood? Sources of blood include autologous, direct transfusion, homologous. Okay. What do you mean by autologous blood transfusion? Here the patient knows that he has going to be done with an elective surgery and he need a particular requirement of blood for the surgery. So in this sort of condition, patient himself transfuse blood prior to the surgery. It should be three days before to the surgery and uh, he can tell to the physician that he need his own blood to be transfused. In such sort of transfusion, we can reduce hemolytic reactions more. So, autologous blood transfusion has other specificities also. For example, here the patient should have Hb more than 11 gram per deciliter and he should be healthy enough to transfuse blood okay and he should transfer three days prior to the surgery what is next directed transfusion directed transfusion or donor specific transfusion means here the patient himself donate or designate a person from his family or friend group that he will be the one who transfuse blood to the patient but here also there is specification for ABO compatibility the person whose director should have all the eligibility criteria for transfusion for example the age should be between 18 to 45 years and then he should have a hemoglobin level from 13 gram per deciliter he should not transfuse blood prior to 19 days he should not have any vaccine or antibody therapies uh, for the last 19 days okay all those criteria should be attained next is blood bank or homologous that means the general public is transferring to the blood bank from that it is chosen so these are the main sources of blood and which is the universal donor or negative is the universal donor and AB positive is universal recipient okay so next we will see Selection of blood components. See, actually, blood component is selected by physician according to the patient need. See, what are the important components that are donated to a patient? Whole blood, packed RBC, FFP or plasma, cryoprecipitate and platelet. These are the most common components that are transfused. There are also derivatives like immunoglobulins, plasma proteins, washed leukocytes like that also. Next one. What is compatibility testing? The whole human in the world is criterized according to their blood groups by means of compatibility testing. According to the presence of the glycoprotein called antigen present on the packed RB, red blood cells, they are cl classified into A, B or O groups. You get so the human 
blood group is grouped according to the presence and absence of specific antigen present on the red blood cells and they are classified into blood group a b form the basis of abo system okay next what is rh typing here i tell you the human blood is criterized according to the blood group in abo system and in rh typing the presence of an rh antigen on the surface of rbc determine the human as positive group and negative group okay the rh factor is absent the patient is considered as negative and if the rh factor is positive or present it is considered as rh positive so abo represent patient blood group and rh represent if it is positive or negative you get then rh positive can receive both positive and negative blood but rh negative can receive only negative blood okay next after abo and rh typing what is next to be done prior to transfusion is cross matching what do you mean by cross matching here we will be mixing the recipient serum with donor's rbc in a saline solution for identifying agglutination and that procedure is called coombs serum test it has to be done prior to all transfusion especially packed rbcs okay here you can see the blood group a has antigen on the surface called a and it has antibody to uh, b group in the plasma so he cannot receive blood from the b group in blood group b you have antigen on the surface called b and you have antibody in the plasma anti a so he she cannot receive any blood group from a group next is ab group ab group has antigen on the surface a and b antigen and they don't have any antibodies so it is called universal recipient in o there is no antigen on the rbc but it has anti a and anti b okay so you identify which are the antigens present on the rbc blood is grouped into a b and o okay next one nat testing what is nat testing prior to the transfusion the person who donate blood to the blood bank the blood bank will do nucleic acid test in order to screen the blood from more common diseases like hiv hepatitis syphilis sexually transmitted diseases also so this type of testing should be done for all blood that is donated to a blood bank there is circumstances in emergency situation we will be donate we will be transfusing non nat tested blood also in such type of condition there should be a consent obtained specially for transfusing uh, in the blood that is not done with nat testing okay now we will see before going to the uh, transfusions there are some prerequisite that has to be attained before transfusions first of all there should be a written physician order there should be a complete physician order in order to initiate a blood transfusion and next one you should ensure the patient by patient identification in the bedside with two members okay and then they you should verify all the all the need or the rational for the blood transfusion there should be a baseline vital signs for the patient and the vital signs should be normal limit especially the temperature of the patient okay then if you bring the blood from the blood bag you should initiate blood transfusion within 30 minutes because a warm temperature will increase the bacterial growth in the blood okay then you should before initiation you should verify the blood with the patient and it should include two members physician and the nurse will be cross checking the blood with the unit number blood group number patient identification nat testing all those factors along with visual check for the contamination of the blood okay then according to the policy of each hospital you can transfuse and you should closely monitor the vital signs and in during transfusion if you find any abnormal reaction from the patient you should immediately stop the transfusion so these are the most common nurses responsibility you have to be done in initiation of blood transfusion now we will see individual product the first one is whole blood 
See, whole blood transfusion is most commonly done in patient who has an obvious hemorrhage. Okay, and it contains the whole blood contains RBC plasma plasma proteins along with coagulation coagulation uh, elements like 60 ml. So, what is the main function for transfusion of whole blood? Means it will be restoring the blood volume and oxygen carrying capacity of the circulatory system, and it is most commonly indicated for large amount of hemorrhage and for decreased uh, hematocrit or HB level approximately one unit consists of 500 ml and the lifespan for whole blood is 35 degree and you have to store whole blood in a degree of 2 to 8 degree Celsius okay and this whole blood also contains cellular debris so there is there should be filtered infusion set that has to be used in order to prevent agglutination reactions okay Next, packed RBC. Packed RBC is most commonly given for patient who has anemia or decreased oxygen carrying capacity. What is the difference between whole blood and packed RBC means whole blood will increase the normal volume. Yani it, it, it will increase the volume of the body. Circulatory overload is more commonly seen in whole blood in which packed RBC will be with less amount and it will be correcting the hemoglobin and oxygen carrying capacity. This is the difference. So, it is administered in patient who has less Hb than 7 gram per deciliter and packed RBC will be raising the hematocrit 3 percentage by 1 uh, blood bag transfusion or 1 gram per deciliter is increased in 1 unit of transfusion and it should be transfused over a period of 4 hours and it should not exceed 4 hours. The temperature of keeping packed RBAC is 2 to 6 degree Celsius and one bag contain 300 ml. Okay. Next, platelets. Platelets are most commonly given in case of decreased count that is occurring due to decreased production or increased destruction. You know all the components of the blood is produced from the bone marrow. If the bone, ha bone marrow is damaged or diseased, it has aplasia, then we have to be replaced. Most commonly given in patient who has bleeding. Okay, And it contains around 35 to 50 ml in each bag. It should be transfused over 30 to 40. 5 minutes each platelet will increase an adult with 70 kg around 10,000 millimeter cube of platelets and it should be stored in 22 degree celsius and the half life period or the shell life for the platelet is 2 to 5 days or up to 7 days you can be stored next one is ffp or plasma fresh frozen plasma is it's it's thawed from RBC and what is the function? It is rich with coagulation factor 5, 8 and 11. The most common use of FFP is to correct coagulation deficit most commonly for high INR okay, or high coagulation profile. Then warfarin reversal in order to reverse the function of warfarin. Warfarin is an anticoagulant or disseminated intravascular coagulation. That means there is multiple uh, clot that is formed in the entire capillaries or arteries or veins or blood vessels. Next is it contains around 200 to 250 ml in each unit. Okay, It has to be transfused 30 to 45 minutes and the lifespan for FFP is 12 month or 1 year and it has to be stored in 18 degree Celsius. 1 ml will increase clotting factor 1 percentage when you transfer FFP. Okay. Next one, cryoprecipitate. Cryoprecipitate is the product that is extracted from FFP. Okay. Most commonly it is given for less fibrogen fibrinogen count hemophilia A von Willebrand disease or factor deficient for von Willebrand. It is a specific factor that is uh, coming in, uh, in function with factor 8 and it is to be given if there is deficient von Willebrand or hemophilia 8 or deficient with factor 8 body's deficiency with factor 8 and it is a precipitate that is obtained from FFP. Okay. Then it has to be stored in 18 degree Celsius and up to one year. So this is the main function for cryoprecipitate. 
what should be done by the nurse upon initiation of blood transfusion the important important nurse's responsibility upon initiation of blood transfusion is closely observe for 5 to 15 minutes for all the vital signs and patient reaction to the transfusion how often the nurse should monitor the vital signs for the first hour every 15 minutes then 30 minutes on the second hour then hourly up to next transfusion or up to the transfusion finish and then 2 hours post transfusion this is very important most commonly asked in different exams next we will see to the transfusion reaction what do you mean by transfusion reaction if you give a person um, most commonly transfusion reactions are not occurring in any extent if it is occurs it is classified into acute transfusion reaction and delayed transfusion reaction it is occurring because of the antibody production from the recipient body to the donors uh, blood or Uh, blood groups and it is an agglutination that takes place with antigen and antibody and it causes hemolysis or rbc lysis and this lysed hb will be blocking the uh, renal tubules which will cause renal damage also so the reactions are classified into acute and delayed in acute you can see allergic reaction febrileness air embolism circulatory overload urticaria fever chills and in delayed you can see hemosiderosis and hiv cytomegalovirus infections and hepatitis these are the, there are uh, another transfusion reactions also next we will see to what are the nurses responsibility upon you find a transfusion reaction first of all you have to stop the transfusion immediately if you find something going wrong then you have to flush the line with normosaline why we are choosing normosaline means here dextrose cannot be used for flushing because it will cause lysis of rbc or dextrose solutions next rl cannot be chosen because the calcium containing in the ring lactate will cause coagulation next uh, so, so you should stop immediately the transfusion then you have to flush the line with normosaline then you have to inform to the physician then you have to fill up a transfusion reaction investigation form and you have to inform the health event reporting to the Uh, supervisor then you have to send this transfusion reaction form along with the blood samples taken from the patient to the blood bank in order to have cross matching again okay then you have to document all those things in the patient file all those things are asked in nclex rn exams okay after that which are the samples you have to send you should select the sam to obtain the sample from the opposite side of transfusion okay you have to include cbc chemistry coagulation serum bilirubin first voided urine means in order to identify whether there is hemolyzed rbcs that is uh, that is uh, in the urine and in order to find out renal damage blood urea nitrogen creatinine and cultures these are the important samples you will be sending to the lab okay now we will see to the true or false here is some questions you can uh, you you can answer type b donor can provide blood to blood cells is it true no it is false next ab positive recipient can receive blood from any blood group true rh negative patient may receive both rh negative and positive false only blood products containing rbc need to be cross matched true you can give iv medication at the same time of blood infusing no it's false you hang the blood and 10 minutes later patient complain of chills you will slow the infusion and phone the physician no false you have to stop the infusion flush the line with normosaline and inform the physician because the warm product provide an excellent media for bacterial growth you should start transfusion within 30 to 40 by 40 minutes of receiving false you should initiate transfusion within 30 minutes in obtaining samples for cross match request at least two patient identification true if the nurse suspect an acute hemolytic reaction the nurse should first notify the physician false the nurse should first stop the transfusion so these are the important points today's class we dealt with important points for blood and blood components so we will see the next